that time again, and somebody's got to do it, so it might as well be me. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is April 1st. It is the April Fool's weekend. And you are so lucky. I just realized those April Fool's a couple hours ago. I'm not prepared to do anything. But next year, whew, you better be on guard. You have been warned. All right. So what are we doing here? We're giving a review. We're giving me a report card, basically. We are going to look at the 59 stocks that I covered over the last 45 days. Are they making any money for us? Are we getting any gains out of them? How big are these gains? How quick are they coming in? These are legitimate questions, not just for you, but for me too, because I'm curious. See, I've done this before. I put out a video February 19th, covered 45 stocks that we had done in 30 days. The reason I want to know if my change up in my research style is making a difference. I used to just go to the news, find hot news and hope that stock ran. Well, that wasn't working for me. So I decided to look for hot charts, get news to back up the chart, see if that was working. Well, the first 30 days we covered 45 stocks, we got 42%, over 10%. Now, I didn't think that was bad, but I really didn't think it was good. I think we could do better, and we have. Let me show you. Yeehaw! Man, over 71% of all the stocks we looked at took over 10% gains. Over 71%. That last video, we only had 42%. Now, let's whittle this down. Let's make it even better. Most of us, we really don't want to sell until we hit our first target of 20% gains, right? So let's get rid of all the stocks that didn't do at least 20%. What we're left with out of the 42 is 26. 26 stocks did over 20% gains. Well, 26 from 59, that is 44%. 44% at 20% gains. Last video was 42% at 10% gains. No matter how you slice it, folks, we're getting better at this. So this is the list of those 26 stocks with over 20% gains. Highest at the top, lowest down here at the bottom. Now this took me all day Saturday to do, folks. So I really hope you appreciate it. I'm not kidding. It took me all day to get all the numbers and all the calculations to set up this so that you could see it and to type it right. God, you can't imagine how hard that was. So hopefully I got everything right here. So what do I have set up? We've got the tickers here. Then we have the date we reviewed it. So if you're interested in some information on the ticker, this is the date I made the video. The start price is actually the closing price the day we looked at it. High price, well, that's the high it hit sometime after we looked at it. The end price, that's the price it is right now. If it's green, it's still higher than when we looked at it. If it's red, yeah, it's lower than when we looked at it. Time span. This is how many days it took before it hit that high. So here we went from 13 cents to 31 cents in one day and made 138% gains. We're up here, it took 16 days before we got that 283. Now, if you're going to be around for 16 days waiting for that gain, you're going to have to be patient. And the best way to do that, folks, is to start using your long charts. I trade on a five minute, but I like to use my four hour chart to tell me this fall right now on the five minute, is it a fall or a bounce? See, when I go over to the four hour chart, I'm looking for it to fall under the nine day or the 20 day there. If it doesn't go underneath the nine day on the four hour chart, I'm not convinced that on the five minute chart, this fall is a fall. I think it's a bounce. So we got lots of information here, folks. You've got stocks that traded in one day after we looked at it. Some took over a month. We've got one, two, three, four, five of them here, over 100% gains. Lots of information here, folks. The bottom line is you're not wasting your time. Not with 71% of the stocks we're looking at taking over 10% gains. 44% taking over 20% gains. Now, I want to share with you a little information about how I'm identifying these. This is a good before and after, right? And I don't want to go too deep into it, so I got three stocks I want to show you. DHC, USAU, and TOI. Let's start off here with DHC, which has been over my head all this time. This is how I found it. 
Yeah, there is more, but I've locked it in so you can see how I found it on uh, what day was that? Let me see. That was on uh, the 21st of February. So I found this like this. She had just broken out over the 200, right? She is firmly above there. She has dragged her nine day with her and she looked good. Look at our technicals. All of our technicals were on fire. My PPO was spreading apart from my ADX. MACD's crossed over and my RSI is on fire. So I went and found some catalyst. The catalyst was she had a financial coming up and everything looked good. So I thought there was a good chance this financial was going to be strong. This is what we had happen. The financial came out right there. We looked at it right here. There's our blue line. We looked at it there. After we looked at it, she did fall right down to her 200 day SMA. There was some pre-excitement before it came out. Then it fell just before it came out. And then when it came out, it exploded. And she took off here at roughly a dollar. It's 96 cents. And she went up to $2. So even if you didn't get in here and you watched her roll and then you seen she was taken off, you could have probably got in somewhere here and got yourself virtually 100% gain before she fell back. Now what you see here is I have thrown up a Fibonacci. And I poke that down here at the bottom of this surge. And then I poke it up at the top. And this puts up support and resistance lines algorithmically. You don't have to have price points behind you. What I'm looking for is my 50% mark here. I want to see if she kept at least 50%. Because if she kept 50%, it's at least 6 out of 10 that she's going to hold that position and then start to climb again. If she comes under 50%, it's at least 6 out of 10 she's going to fall some more. So I want to see if she's hanging around the 50. Well, you can see right here, she is on the bar above it. She is very strong. Here's our halfway point. She is up here. She has rolled down. She could push further down here, so I would keep my eye on that. But we're not looking at this right now for another runner. I'm trying to show you why we were looking at this. We had strong push out over the 200. She had a financial coming up. Looking at the information, her revenue's growing. It looked feasible that the financial was going to be strong, so we just jumped on it. Let's take a look at TOI. TOI, that was also about a financial, but this one had to do about them overreacting to it. Now, let's get you the picture that I saw. Uh, right there. Back it up. Okay. Right there is where I saw it, folks. She was coming down. Actually, I did see it one more. <laughs> Come on out right there. So, she had a financial. Come out here and it fell and it fell hard well i went and looked at the financial it didn't look bad i looked at the revenues the revenues had been growing quarter after quarter the revenues i couldn't find anything bad in them i mean maybe there was something there but it sure wasn't jumping out at me so i consider this to be an overreaction. she fell all the way down to this low bubble and she started to curve around and this is when i saw it i saw her curving around so i figured she was going to do a full turnaround and come right back up to this line right there so that's when we looked at it well this is what happened the very next day, she got a bounce. I think it's like 37% gains. What was a toy? Toy was 37% uh, gains. That came in two days. Is that right? <laughs> I said two days. Let's see. One. No, that was one day. So I made a mistake on that one. So we had a 37% gain in one day. Then she went sideways and then drooped. And now it looks like she's falling. Now, what I want to show you on this chart is very good. This is a perfect perfect right here we have got a setup on my ADX this red line ADX shows me trend continuation my PPO this is percentage price oscillator it's a lot like the MACD I purposely put my PPO on the top and my ADX on the bottom do you see this hourglass shape here this mirror image you got that blue line coming down and then up you got the red line coming up and then down right you got that hourglass thing going look here Right where that started to drop here and started to climb, follow my line up, what happened? She started to fall. And the entire time these two lines are coming together, it is falling. Look, as soon as it starts to spread, the blue line starts pushing away from the red line. What happened? 
the price started to go up. And as long as these continue to spread apart, the price will continue to rise. So this is why I like to use these two oscillators set up the way they are like that. As soon as this line changes, that spread, if one line changes, that means it's not going up anymore. As long as it keeps going further and further, I know my price is rising. Right now, we can see that 50-day SMA is beating the price on its head and pushing it down right now. Last one we're going to take a look at is USAU. Let me scoot this one out so you can see what I saw. USAU is a gold company. They've got three projects here in the United States. Their catalyst, two of the projects are still in exploration. I never consider that much of a catalyst. Their third project in Wyoming, that is in the developmental stage. It is a gold pit. They're just digging from the ground down and they're smelting the rocks. Well, they're doing this in Wyoming and the gold has already been validated. They just need to start digging. They need Wyoming to give them the backing. Well, Wyoming is eager to do it because Wyoming gets 5% royalties from all the money made from these mining companies, oil companies, coal companies, but they lost their coal money. They lost their oil money and they have fallen on their budget from 500 million down to 170 million for their schools. So they're desperate right now and they're eager. So I believe that Wyoming is definitely going to help them get that mine up and running. So this is what I saw. Now we're on the four hour, right? So she is running gradually uphill. The 50 day is turning around. She's already busted the 200 once and she has crammed up underneath the 200 with the nine day underneath, squishing that price bar, squishing, squishing, squishing. And I was thinking there was a possibility this could pop. So I went and found all that catalyst. Well, this is what we got out of her folks. Good timing right? Very good timing. Watching it get squeezed here. She got pushed right on up on top of that 200. And once she got on top of that 200, she flew folks one, two, three days. She went from $4.38 to $6.53. And she has fallen back to about $5.60. Now, remember what I was saying about using a long chart? Let me see if I can give you an example here. Let's see if we can find one. No, that's not a good one. Let's go to DHC. DHC, okay. She fell real hard right here. Let's see what date that is. That is the 29th. So let's go back uh, one hour, four hours, 29th. Let's see if we can find that. 29th is right here. Yep, that's the 29th, okay? So we were just looking at that and we seen it was falling really deep. Well, these bars are every four hours. So I'm looking to see if this bar is underneath that nine day SMA. Cause look, if it's on top of the nine day, it's climbing. If it gets underneath it, it is falling, right? All the time it's under that nine. When it starts beating its head, it goes sideways. When it gets on top, it starts climbing. You cannot climb till you're on top of the nine. But if you're only looking at the five day, five minute charts, this looks like a panic button. Whoa, panic, panic, panic. But when you come back to the longer chart, you get a better view of what's going on. And you can see she's still within the safe realm. She has not actually come out of where she has been stuck for a long time. So this is how I read my charts, folks. I am looking for those breakout plays, looking for just a poke out over the 200 or just under the 200 right in this area. You want that 200 day coming down and you want your price coming up so that there's a crossover between the two. That's what you're looking for, folks. That is what I like to call the atypical breakout chart. Folks, there's lots of charts out there and they're a lot faster to read than the news. I guarantee you. All you got to do, and I'm going to show you this very, very quickly. I bring up my scan here and I've got a button next to it and I can open up. I might as well open this up for you. I can open this up over here and bring up a quick chart, something like this. And all I got to do is click a button, bing, bing, bing. And I can see, oh, there's a nice one. And I can see at a start. Now I've got it on four hours. That's what I do my searches on four hours. I can zoom in later, but I want to see on the four hour chart. Is there something that looks like it's ready to go up over that? 200 day SMA. Now there are other setups I am looking for like this. 
Now, we don't have a 200-day SMA in there. She's come down hard. The 50 acts like the 200 now. Since the 200 is not there, it is the dominant SMA. She came underneath it, showed a lot of enthusiasm, one big bar breaking it. That's when I look. When I see a big bar going through a strong SMA, I tend to watch it to see if it's trying to climb out of the pit. And it is. It's trying to climb out of the pit right now. So this is one I would go see if there was a catalyst. I'd go through the filings. I'd go through the news, not just today's, not just yesterday's or last week's, but over the last 60 days, because they may have told you something a month ago that's going to happen at the end of April, but nobody's thinking about it right now. Everybody's forgot about it. The stock went up, came down. It's real quiet right now, way down here, right? And nobody's even looking, but you know that this is going to happen. So you can get in now and wait for that catalyst to come and that perfectly defined window of opportunity and you'll be the one that gain. So folks, whew, I'm getting all tongue tied now. <laughs> you have got a lot of information there, but the bottom line here was we are not wasting our time looking at charts first instead of the news. Due diligence, it does pay off. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.